and welcome to Full Tweet. I'm Sophia. And I'm Leslie. And we're the student anchors for the show. We have a ton of great stories for you to hear today. Today's stories include how one elementary school completely changed the old school book report, and a high school dance team that got to perform in front of a worldwide audience. We also have some highlights from a recent academic contest that took place that probably isn't what you expected it to be. And then I'll take you to a special recognition of the CCISD student leaders. And finally, we'll have a Valentine's special of Sophia's Choice. We'll start with the performance of a lifetime for several Carol Tigerettes. The dance team was invited to participate in the halftime show for the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Leslie got to interview some of the Tigerettes to see what the experience meant for them. With over 70,000 fans and 9 million television viewers watched the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve. At the eye of the storm was the Carol Tigerettes, who were asked to perform at halftime. I spoke with some of the Tigerettes to see what the experience meant to them. Can you tell me uh, what exactly was the Orange Bowl? Um, so it's like, it's a college football game that we, um, it's a college football game we did perform during halftime. So, and it was just amazing because, you know, we're used to like just, a hundred people in the stadiums to like thousands of people in the stadium. So it was like amazing. All you see was flashing lights and all you're just like, oh, you think you're practicing and experiences you had to go through in order to prepare for the Orange Bowl. We had a lot of practices. We practiced for like maybe more than 15 hours. Um, it was a lot of hard work, but it was really fun at the same time. It was a very good experience. And as a senior, what did this uh, experience mean to you being able to have one of your last performances be such a big, uh, such a big one. They meant the world to me. It's something I will never forget. Can you tell me a little bit about the experience uh, that went into uh, practicing for the Orange Bowl? The experience was um, not very hard, but it was very strenuous. We, um, our top three officers, had to learn our routine, clean it ourselves, and then teach it to the team. And then as soon as we got to Miami. We had to stage it with a choreographer, and of course there were some little errors we made, but other than that, it was it was a very good experience for all of us. And you're a senior, correct? Yes. And so, um, what did this mean to you, to be able to do something so amazing with as, your team? As a senior, it was just so perfect. The way, perfect way to end out my senior year was to perform in Miami, Florida with um, 52 girls that I love so much. And it just, it felt really good knowing that I'm going to end my senior year the way it was. And for any of those future Tigerettes that are there in elementary and middle school, what are some uh, advice that you'd like to give to them as a senior graduating? Um, just keep dancing and do whatever you uh, dream about. If you dream of being on Tigerettes, if you dream of dancing, come out and come to the little Tigerette clinic and see what it's all about. So we're all familiar with writing a book report. Two page long, proper bibliography, complete sentences, and for us high school students, MLA format. But those days of lesson seen as elementary are over. The staff found a new method to demonstrate the love these students have for reading. Let's check it out. Los Encinos recently tried a new idea, having students participate in a reading fair. We all understand book reports, but a reading fair? Wouldn't that be a bit confusing? So yes, they were wondering what, what's a reading fair. I've never heard about a reading fair, and so now you know what a reading fair is. And so, of course, the children, they picked a book, and, and they had to create a project based off of certain story elements from, the, from their book. You know, they go from very basic uh, all the way up, you know, starting with their pre-K students up to fifth grade. So they had to, of course, do the title, the author, illustrator, publisher, copyright date, the main characters, setting, plot summary, conflict, solution, author's purpose, and uh, tone or mood. Students had to create a board that demonstrated the essential elements of their book. Christian Rocha found that that was not so easy. There wasn't a lot of spy stuff throughout the store, so we had to get a few things from the internet. This I got from an old book I had. So me and my mom got creative with what we have. It seems that it takes more than just the students' effort to make this project a success. We really wanted it to be a, a family project. Yes, the students, especially in the upper grade, from second on through fifth grade, the story elements is something that's being covered in the curriculum throughout the year. So they're familiar with that part. Then it was the creativity to have the board, the center of the board, look like the, have the, the essence of the book represented on the cover of the board. 
So who judges the projects and awards the winners? We have about 13 judges that um, are here today to judge all of the pro uh, projects. We have reading professors from uh, Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi, employees from the Education Service Center who are involved with early childhood. We have uh, board members from CCISD who are present today uh, who are also helping us, as well as other uh, um, individuals from the community. We asked Texas A&M Corpus Christi reading professor Corrine Valadez for her reaction to the reading fair. Incredible. Incredible. It's exciting to come in and see a fair dedicated to reading and to see that the children have gotten into the books, have learned the story elements, and really been able to not only show that they grasped the concepts associated with stories, but also that they really enjoyed it. And it was obvious to see that many of the um, projects were done in collaboration with their parents, which is a great thing. Parents and children should be reading together. I think we all know that kids nowadays are claimed to be lazy and unmotivated, only interested in their video games, but here at CCISD, that is not the case. Leslie got to attend the Student Leadership Reception, where some students were honored for going above and beyond. Here's the true story. My name is Leslie Solomon from Full Tweet and I'm here showcasing to you the student leadership reception that took place today, February 12th at the American Bank Center. A handful of students from across the district who are amazing leaders, student council president and vice president, as well as high school senior council officers are being recognized today for the good things that they're doing in their schools. Austin, can you tell me, um, what do you do at Morales as student council president? What, what we do is like we organize um, fundraisers from Morales Elementary, like in, we every now and then we have meetings and then we come up with ideas for different fundraisers that we could raise money for Morales Elementary. From what I know, you were actually a high school student council president at Carroll High School, right? Yes, yes ma'am, I was. And so how does it go from being student council president to student council advisor? Like how does that even, what made you want to be an advisor? When I had, I had a really good advisor from Carroll High School and I always learned from her, she gave us the opportunity to lead our council. So what I took from her was giving these students, my young fifth and third and fourth graders, the opportunity to really lead what they wanted to change in the school and make decisions based on what they saw the school needed. So what is some advice that you'd like to give these elementary, middle school and high school students that you saw today getting recognized? My advice would be, um, don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid of big projects. You'll never know what you're capable of until you try. I'm here with Dylan Olson from Moody High School. He's Senior Council President. So Dylan, can you tell me um, what goes into being Senior Council President at your school? Well, being Senior Council President, you have to get to know your seniors because at Moody, we look, we want our seniors to graduate high school and go on for further education to college so we usually hand out like or we usually host um, little ceremonies in our cafeteria about like why you should go to college the benefits and that's pretty much it. I'm here with Joseph from Evans and you are student council president and he's here being recognized at the American Bank Center for being such an awesome leader so Joseph tell me what does it mean to be recognized today? Well it feels special because because whenever you're out there on the campus seeing kids getting pushed around, you're able to help and also help other people whenever they need your help, like in math or science and what, whatever they're going through. And you can also make people feel better, turn the day around, and um, make them feel special. So after recognizing 59 campuses, my hands kind of hurt from clapping. But it was a great night and all, and we got to recognize all the amazing leaders here in the community. They're doing a great job, and we obviously are going to see more of them because they're just doing fantastic. So next on the show is our regular, Sophia's Choice, where she takes a unique look at familiar faces with none other than Valentine's Day. Hey everyone, so I know Valentine's Day passed, but I'm always looking for a laugh. One of my favorite things about Valentine's Day, outside of the discounted chocolate that is, is hilarious 
Valentine's Day card memes. They're pretty simple. Get a colored background, add a badly photoshopped picture of anybody, and add a hilariously terrible Valentine's Day pun or pickup line and you're good to go. Today I want to share five of my favorite Valentine's Day card memes. First we have the ain't nobody got time for that woman. She's iconic. Well, while she might not have time for that, she's got time for you. Next, let's bring in some Harry Potter humor. This one features one of my personal favorite characters, Albus Dumbledore. He a Dumbledores you. Let's also throw in some Disney with this next one. For Lion King fans, can you feel the love tonight? Kanye, can you feel the love tonight? Get it? Get it? It's good. It's good. This next one is a personal favorite of mine. It seems that even our president worries about being lonely. Because he says, I don't want to be Obama self tonight. And finally, let's end with one last ridiculous but quite fantastic pickup line. Is your name Wi-Fi? because I'm feeling a connection. So those are five of some of my favorite Valentine's Day card memes. I hope you guys enjoyed those. I always find them so funny, and I hope you guys did too. So that's it for me, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Think you know what academic decathlon is? It's the test of brain power over music, art, history, and so much more. Luckily, there was a full tweet camera on hand to capture the completion of Super Quiz at Moody High School. Got your thinking caps on? You're gonna need them. Recently, area high school students competed at the Academic Decathlon event at Moody High School. All eight CCISD high schools participated. Mark Bedsell was a moderator for the events and parents and supporters packed the gym to see the super quiz. Want to test your skill? Here's a simple question. Question number two. What must happen with very big and opportunity costs? A, a choice of develop their own method of indicating their correct choices. Here we have the overhead diamond, the silent conductor, pencil wave and shocked face, the dirty bird, wagon seas, the understated pencil circle, and the secret handshake press bump. And the winner for the large campus group was King High School. If you think you have what it takes to compete, get in touch with your school's academic decathlon sponsor. And that concludes this episode of Full Tweet. We hope you enjoy the show, share it with your friends, and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear your story ideas and even all your feedback, so don't forget to mention us on all your social media with the hashtag Full Tweet. Now we're going to be looking for new Full Tweet student anchors for the year 2015 to 2016. So if you think you have what it takes to be a Full Tweet student anchor, be on the lookout for new information. We'll have a new episode of Full Tweet coming next month, and we'll see you then. Bye! Bye.